please give Dennis Snow a warm welcome. Dennis. It's everyone on the team looking through the lens of the customer. Everyone on the team recognizing that everything speaks. And everyone on the team creating those moments of wow. Has anybody been on this ride? The Tower of Terror. It's a pretty amazing ride. If, if you have not, what it is, it's this haunted hotel theme. And you go inside and you sit down in these special seats in these elevators, and it takes you 13 stories up to the top. And when you get to the top, the elevator starts to shake, and it feels like it's breaking. And, and why people want to do this, I have no idea. I think that's the weirdest thing. <laughs> but it's a 13-story free fall where you literally come out of your seat on the way down. And, and these seats are Scotch Garden. <laughs> if you've been on it, you know what I'm talking about. You don't want to go on this right after you had breakfast. And when you land, it zips you up to the top and it drops you again. Now get ready for this. That one ride all by itself cost Disney World $100 million to build. Yeah, just that one ride cost $100 million to build. But think about this, when I ask people, what impressed you about Disney World? People say, it was clean. The people were nice. From a design perspective, that's kind of frustrating. But from a business perspective, I think it's very important because Disney World is not selling rides. What are they selling? The experience. The experience, because rides are commodities. There are a lot of places that you can go to get thrill rides. Now, the rides have to be great, but they can't compete just on that because you have so many choices. So it has to be the overall experience. So with that in mind, from the moment you arrive to the moment you leave, everything in between, that's the product because that's the experience. In one of the meetings that we had, Helen, that housekeeper, was there. So when we were going around the room, so what are some things you could do? What are some ideas you have? What are some things you've heard about? And it came to Helen and she said, well, I don't know if it means anything to anybody, but what I do is I, um, I tuck in the Disney characters. You know, <laughs> imagine saying that in front of all your coworkers. Everybody thought this was the greatest idea and it took off. Housekeepers were talking about it, managers were talking about it. Uh, it's become kind of legendary there now. It, it's even become something of a competition for the housekeepers on, on different things they can do. Like some of them, they'll, they'll line the characters up in front of the television set in your room and turn it on. So you walk in, <laughs> just back away, kids, just, just back away, <laughs> all because a housekeeper who has a hard job said, I'm going to create some magic. But from a business perspective, how do we capture that? We need to look at everything that we do, every interaction that we have through the lens of the member, through the lens of the member, because most organizations don't. They'll say that they do, but they don't. They'll say we look through the lens of our customer, but they don't. What would mediocre service look like or sound like at each step? And what would excellent service look like or sound like at each step? And here's the reason I suggest that you do it exactly that way. If you pull a step out of the service map and we're meeting with a team and you say, okay, what would mediocre service look like here? I promise you, as good as I know you are, there will be some steps when we start describing mediocre, somebody on the team is going to say, you know what? That sounds a little bit like what's happening at that step right now. Which sounds negative, but it's not, because I'm not talking about poor service. I'm talking about that task-oriented service that sometimes we fall into. And it provides you, as an organization, a wonderful springboard for saying, well, if that's what's happening at that step, and we're saying that's mediocre, then what would excellent service look like? I was on a Southwest plane a while back. Flight attendants have been terrific through the whole thing. But the one I remember is we were getting ready to land. And anytime a plane is landing, you can guarantee the flight attendant will get on the microphone and say, when we pull up to the gate, be careful as you open the overhead bins. Items have a tendency to shift during flight, right? They all say it. So we're on the Southwest plane, we're landing. Flight attendant got on the microphone and said, when we pull up to the gate, be careful as you open the overhead bins. Items have a tendency to shift during flight. And as you know, shift happens. <laughs> so we're all, what did she say, <laughs> what? So we were hanging on every word. When the plane landed, you know how they put on the reverse thrusters to slow the plane down. The co-pilot got on the microphone and went, whoa, big fella, whoa, as we're slowing down. <laughs> so now as we got off the plane, what were we all doing? We were laughing, and that's not usually what you're doing. <laughs> it's usually, get out of my way. 
Now, here's my business question for you. How much did that cost Southwest Airlines to do that? Nothing. To me, that's the beauty of it. It's not about money. It's not about time, because remember, the flight attendants have to give the spiel. It's the law. They have to give the spiel. So it's not about time. It's not about money. It's about looking at what we put our customers through. And I will tell you, it all comes down to what we put our customers through, the processes that we put them through. And we need to see these moments through the lens of the customer. Everything speaks. Everything speaks. Every detail from the appearance of the studio to the tone of voice of somebody that I'm talking to on the telephone, every detail is either enhancing your brand or it's detracting from the brand. And a brand is a very fragile thing. People talk. People talk. Good and bad, people talk. Imagine you bring your family down to Disney World and everybody's excited and you're out front and you're paying your money to get in. <laughs> You've been there. And you start walking down Main Street, USA, and there in front of the castle is Cinderella. And your child, your precious child, runs up to Cinderella, tugs on her dress. She turns around, has a cigarette in one hand, a cup of coffee in the other hand, says, kid, I'm on break. <laughs> what would be the impact on your child? Yeah, probably need therapy. Right. Might be a lawsuit involved. But, but here's the business question now. Here's the business question. Does it matter at that moment how many billions of dollars they've spent building Disney World? Does it matter? It's not worth anything. Now I'm going to ask you a weird question. And I know it's a weird question. And I, I'm really not even looking for an answer right now. Just if, at, today, I just want you to be thinking about this. In your world, what are those smoking Cinderella behaviors? One of the Everything Speaks commitments is, as a cast member, as an employee, if you're walking through the park, you see a piece of trash on the ground, it is your job to go over and pick it up and throw it away. It's non-negotiable. And it doesn't matter if you're Captain Nemo or the Vice President of Marketing, you go over and pick it up and throw it away. When we can do some of those big things, we should. But where the magic is, is in those little wows. Let's say I had an issue about a product or a question about a product, and you, you helped me handle it. And then I get a call back from you the next day just to make sure, hey, anything else, or, you know, did that solve the issue? Now that's just a little thing. But you put enough of those little things together, and you've got something pretty special. Because here's the thing I would ask you to remember. Little wows add up. Hang on, I'm getting it. You're parked in Goofy 21. You're thinking, oh, man, these Disney people can read my mind. The, the, the key control folks is they hand the keys back. And again, let's say it's the dad that locked the keys in the car. And as we said, it's embarrassing. So as they hand the keys back, they'll try and save the dad's pride. You know, they'll say something like, I'm sorry the keys got locked in the car. Like it's their fault. I'm sorry the keys got locked in the car. And the dad will always say the same thing. That's OK. <laughs> always, always. The really tough ones say, just don't let it happen again, because then there's going to be trouble. Dennis Snow is an expert in customer service, employee development, and leadership. His customer service abilities were honed over 20 years with the Walt Disney World Company, beginning his career in 1979 as a frontline attractions operator, then moving throughout the company in various leadership positions, learning what it takes to run a world-class, service-driven organization. Dennis launched a division of the Disney Institute, which quickly became the fastest growing venture of the Institute and experienced repeat business of nearly 100%. He also spent several years teaching corporate philosophy and business practices to cast members and the leadership team. In his last year with Walt Disney World, Dennis's leadership performance was ranked in the top 3% of the company's leadership team. Dennis is the author of two books, Unleashing Excellence, The Complete Guide to Ultimate Customer Service, and his newest, Lessons from the Mouse, a guide for applying Disney World's secrets of success to your organization, your career, and your life. I do promise you this. If you're seeing through the lens of the customer, if you're paying attention to the details, if you're creating those moments of wow, while we're probably not going to get to the tattoo, we get to the loyalty. And I think that's worth every moment of effort that we put into it. I hope that these ideas have been helpful for you today. Thank you all very, very much for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you all very much. Thank you.